By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back at the Often Troll Cup in Leeuwarden, the Netherlands. This is old school at its best. We've got 60 plus players playing at this tournament. And here we are in, I believe, round number six or something. Anyway, these are two really top decks that have been performing really well at this tournament today. We're going to look at Dead Guy Ale on steroids that's being piloted by Robert Young. And he is taking on a Belgian player, Jorgo, who's playing with an ATOC deck. I like one of those nasty ATOC decks. He did put in two often trolls for the flavor, so I do respect that very much, Jorgo. Now, before I go to the deck decks, because I've got beautiful deck photos of both of these decks, I would just like to point out that you can also skip that part of the video by checking the timestamps that you can find in the description below. So you can find a timestamp there that reads MTG Games. If you click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And in the description below, you can also find information about the specific rule set. So if you want to know what kind of old school rules are they following at the Often Troll Cup, or if you want to have a look at the Facebook page of the Often Troll Cup or the Instagram of the Often Troll Cup, all that information can be found in the description uh, below. And as for now, we are going to continue with the deck decks. I'm actually going to start with the deck of the player on the left. That is Robert Jan, and we're going to look at his Dead Guy Ale on steroids. And here we see the deck of Robert Jan. So it's Dead Guy Ale, that means white and black, but it's on steroids. And why did they uh, add that to the deck name? It's because the steroids refer to the blue power. So as you can see, there's Time Walk, Time Twister, and Ancestral Recall in this deck. So those are the only blue cards that you can find in here, and that's why it's called On Steroids. And what I like about this deck is Juzam Jin. It's just great to see Juzam. Juzam is not as popular anymore because of, you know, the unrestriction of Mace of If, the City in the Bottles. So it's just really nice to see people still playing with it because, you know, in the at the end of the day, it's still a 5-5 five, five for four mana. I mean, that's still huge value. But of course, you know, if you run into a Mace, it's just gonna hurt yourself. Or if you're gonna run into a City in a Bottle, it's even worse. So, you know, I, I understand why it sees less play, but I'm really happy to see it being played here. And this deck is doing exceptionally well today. I mean, it's I played against this deck at this tournament with my um, uh, Timmy's um, Spellbook. And I got annihilated by this deck. And one of the main reasons that I got annihilated were those four Underworld Dreams. So I think aggro in combination with Underworld Dreams goes exceptionally well. So Underworld Dreams, um, an enchantment for three black that reads every time your opponent draws a card, they get a damage. So especially when you're a blue player <laughs> like me, or you're playing with blue power like Yorho and with, um, with Wheel of Fortune and with other draw sevens, of course, then you're gonna you're in for a lot of pain when you're you know playing against this deck and it's also great to see four dark rituals so this deck what it wants to do is just be really aggressive from the get-go you know or you know turn two you want to do something you want to play out a sinkhole you want to play out a hypnotic specter you want to play out a juzum you want to you know play out underworld dreams you want to be really really aggro you want to take the lead as, as a matter of fact preferably turn one if you have a dark ritual or a black lotus you can probably already do something. If you just have a Mox, then maybe, you know, it's a Mox Jet and you can play a Sinkhole. So this deck will get out of the gates sprinting, running, steaming, whatever, however you want to call it, you know what I mean. It's super aggressive. Uh, what I like about this deck as well is the inclusion of the one Armageddon. When you're ahead of the game, just dump the Armageddon, kill all the lands inside, and, you, and then you'll probably stay ahead, right? So if you've got like an early Juzam Jin, your opponent doesn't have a big creature or an answer, Drop your Armageddon, get all the lands out of the way, make it really difficult for your opponent to play anything out. And in the meanwhile, you can just keep attacking with your Juzam. Remember, it is a 5-5. Five five, so when this baby hits the board early, your opponent is most likely to be on a four turn clock. Now that is some serious pressure. Now when we're looking at the sideboard here, we see uh, the black knights with protection from white. I don't think they're gonna uh, get into the board here, but a few cards that will probably see some play after sideboarding or Blue Elemental Blast, Circle of Protection Red, and perhaps also the Two Terrors, because remember, Robert Jan is playing against an ATOC deck, and you just want to get rid of those ATOCs as soon as you can. Talking about that, perhaps Energy Flux could actually work a little bit, kind of forcing uh, his opponent, Jorgo, to like early eat up the artifacts with the ATOC when maybe he doesn't want to, 
because you know energy flux is going to force your hoe to pay an extra upkeep of two for each artifact and an ATOG deck will most likely have a lot of artifacts so energy flux could work as well perhaps also an inclusion of the second armageddon although i'm kind of i wonder because the deck of Yorho doesn't need a lot of mana, so Yorho's probably also playing Armageddon, so maybe you're just helping him by playing out Armageddon's instead of helping yourself. Anyway, this is the deck of robert -Jan. really a fine-tuned deck. It's created, by the way, by Richard. He's the one who kind of made this version of that guy ill. Um, yeah, that's it. So let's just take a look at the deck of his opponent, Yorho, at his Atok deck. And here we see the deck of Yorho, and I'm not surprised to see Atok doing really well because Atok is simply a tier one deck. So, um, and especially when you make it in the way that Yorho makes it. Um, I mean, we see four Atok, so let's maybe first focus on that creature, one red and one, and it's a one, two creature from the Antiquities expansion, and you can sacrifice an artifact to give it plus two, plus two. And why is that such a good ability? Well, it basically means that all your artifacts turn have like a second ability there they do what they already do but they're also a mini giant growth for your atok and whenever you attack with your atok your opponent is in a tough position because if he doesn't block you know you can probably pump the atok and deal like 10 damage in one go if you've got like four or five artifacts which of course is a problem for your opponent because then the life total will probably be cut in half but then again if he blocks he's probably trading a good creature that he doesn't want to trade for a couple of artifacts that the opponent isn't really using so it's, it's really difficult, and I really like to see Atok with artifacts like, you know, Ankh of Mishra, uh, Black Vice, also the Moxen, City in a Bottle, because these are artifacts that are sometimes really, really good, but sometimes they have no purpose, and sometimes they can even work against you, like an Ankh of Mishra. And with the Atok, you constantly have the option of, you know what, he's got no cards in hand anymore, I'm not expecting a draw seven, I'm just gonna sack my vice to my Atok and just deal some extra damage with it. You know, you have that option. Same thing goes for City in a Bottle. You play City in a Bottle and your opponent doesn't play with Arabian Nights or hardly has any or you've already used it to kill his main Arabian Nights cards when you got the City in, in play. Well, then it still has a function after that. You know, you can sack it to the Atok to deal two extra points of damage or to kill a creature or whatever. You know, it's it's always good to have options. And what the ATOG does, it gives you an extra option with all your artifacts. I mean, talk about the Mox, and a Mox is super powerful, but it's especially good as a tempo play. When you're later in the game, it's kind of gonna lose its value, but then it doesn't matter because you can sack it and feed it to the ATOG, and all of a sudden it can become relevant again. So I really kind of like that about ATOG. It makes your artifacts better. That's just what it does. Um, looking at the rest of the deck, we kind of see some really old school tricks here that um, I remember from back in the day when I started playing Magic. And what I really remember is uh, draw sevens like Wheel of Fortune and Black Vice. That is a huge issue, right? Because you, uh, you let your opponent draw seven new cards. Then you say, hey man, it's your turn. That means three damage for your opponent if you've got a Vice on the table. So that's like an extra lightning bolt. And of course, he's already playing with four bolts. So this is a super aggro deck, by the way, as you probably noticed already. And also um, the combination Black Vice and Ank of Mishra is a really good one because when you play a Black Vice, you're kind of telling your opponent you need to start playing out cards or else you're going to get uh, damaged by the Vice. But with the Ank on the table, you're saying, you know, you don't want to play out a lot of lands because if you do, you get two damage every time you play a land. So your opponent is kind of in a catch-22. And usually the Ank and Vice work extra well when you've got that, you know, pressure on the board with Chain Lightning, Lightning Bolt, maybe an early Atok, Mishra's Factory attacks. So you're probably going to get your opponent down very quickly to like 10 or something. And then when there's an Ank on the board and a Vice on the board, you really have to start puzzling in your head as an opponent to think, how can I survive this long enough to deal some damage? I do think that uh, a big problem here uh, for Yorho can be the uh, Underworld Dreams that Robert John is playing. I mean, Underworld Dreams is really a card that this type of deck doesn't like. Um, luckily enough, um, Yorho has decided to splash white for those very powerful disenchants. Can you imagine if he wouldn't have white in this deck? then enchantments would be a really big problem for him. But because he's got white, he has access to disenchants. And disenchants could be a lifesaver in this matchup against Yorho, because he, uh, sorry, against Robert John, because Yorho really wants to get rid of those um, Underworld Dreams as soon as they hit the table. Okay, so this was the deck deck about the deck of Yorho. We've already looked at the deck of Robert John. I think both of these decks 
could win this tournament, to be honest. I think they're super strong and, and both are super aggressive. So this match could be quite spectacular. Let's go to the games. Game number one, here we go. We've got Robert John sitting on the left with Dead Guy Ill on steroids and he's playing against Yorgo. He's sitting on the right with his Atog deck. And as we can see, Robert John is taking a mulligan, putting one card on the bottom. And there is a strong opener by Yorgo here, Soul Ring and then into Black Vice. So that means immediate damage, but of course, Robert John did take a mulligan, so only two damage instead of three. So that's a little silver lining for that mulligan here. There we see a scrubland and a pass turn. And that means, oh, this is really good, a strip mine. So he can now attack for two. So that means, yeah, he's gonna drop to 16. And then it looks like he's gonna pass turn. He's gonna take even more damage from the vice, of course. He's gonna drop to 14. And this is that immediate pressure that I talked about in the deck deck. Oh, look at this, dark ritual into Chaos Orb, activating Chaos Orb, he's gonna flip on exactly the Mishra's Factory and that is a hit. Very nice flip here by Robert John, very relaxed flip. And the Mishra's Factory is a goner. There is an Ang of Mishra and that Ang is just so annoying when you're on 14, at least he's still on 14 though. No damage from the Vice taken because of that Dark Ritual played last turn. There is a Scrubland, he's gonna take two damage, gonna go down to 12. And I guess Dark Ritual is really a great card as well to work around the uh, Mishra's Factory. Here we see Yorho taking first uh, points of damage here, dropping to 18 because of his own Ankh of Mishra. There we see a Disenchant on the end step of Yorho here on the Ankh. And there is a Strip Mine on the dual land of Yorho. And I mean, I have to say, it's not looking too bad for Dobrichan, considering he took a mulligan and that strong opener by uh, Yorho, I guess Yorho, yeah. So he's gonna play a Psionic Blast. He's gonna drop to 16 in response to that uh, strip mine on his dual land. And uh, yeah, I think, I mean, he's on eight. It's not great, but could be worse. And there he goes, plays. Is that, yes, that's an Hypnotic Spectre here, the 2-2 Flyer. And every time it damages the opponent, the opponent has to discard a card at random. And here he's gonna take a damage, and there's a bolt on the hippie. And actually, when you're a Robert John, it's not too bad because at least it's not a bolt to the face, you know, and he's on eight. There's even more damage coming, and okay, there's an often troll, and it's met by a quick sword to plowshares by Robert John, so that often troll is a goner. And there is a Juzam Jin. Wow, and this Juzam Jin could be decisive here because it's really hard to get rid of. There we see an Ankh of Mishra. He's gonna take another damage, drop to 15. Play a Chang Lightning. Ooh, he's on five, that's so low. He's gonna go to four because of the Juzam. And Yorgo's gonna drop to 10 after that attack. There's an Underworld Dreams. Wow, this is exciting. Both players are doing really well with their decks. But Robert John, he's on four. And remember, he's got the Juzum, so he's gonna drop to three. If Yorho has a bolt or a chain, it's game over. There we see him tap. Is are we gonna see maybe a side blast to finish the game? No, there's okay, there's a disenchant on the underworld dreams. And Robert John is gonna drop to three. He's gonna untap. He's probably gonna put Yorho on three here, so he just needs one more turn. Yorho gonna go to three, passing turn. Wow, what an exciting game. What is he gonna draw? Oh, no, 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 it's not it. Oh, ho, 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 ho. what a close match. So this is what I love about two of these tier one aggro decks going at it at each other, you know? They're, they're, they're so lean, the builds are so lean and, and so mean and you know, and. It, yeah, it's just, it's just exciting to watch. And even though this was a quick game, it was an exciting game. So this was game one. Both players are gonna go into their sideboards and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. Wow, what an exciting first game that was. Man, and uh, Jorgo is again on the play. There we see his opener and that was quite quick. I did see a soul ring in there and then into an Ankh of Mishra, exactly. So that is really good opener again. And that probably means exactly he's gonna to drop to 18 here, playing a Mishra's Factory of his own. 
What else can he do? Okay, there are Moxon and a Black Lotus. Oh, and those cards are extra good when you're facing an Ang of Mishra. So potentially we could see a Juzam Jin here turn one. That's what I'm hoping for, personally. Looks like he is going to crack the Lotus. Hypnotic Spectre would be good as well. Oh, Dark Ritual also. Tons of mana here. So that means he's got five mana floating at the moment. He can potentially make it seven. Oh, 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 oh this is brutal. This is brutal. Oh my goodness. Oh man. This is so painful for Yorho. What a brutal opener here. By Robert John. Amazing. And there we see Yorho kind of like slamming that volcanic island on there. He's like, there's nothing I can do really. Of course, an ancestral recall. Why not? You know, when you're winning, you're winning, I guess. Amazing. Just insane what Robert John is doing here, showing the power of this dead guy ale on steroids. And the interesting thing is that, you know, in, in lately I'm seeing, I'm seeing less and less dark rituals, but this deck really shows how powerful dark rituals are, how good dark rituals are against cards like Armageddon, Ank of Mishra, Black Vice. You know, because you just get ahead of tempo. You can create a lot of mana. It's just great. Another Ank of Mishra here by Yorgo. And I mean, this is really going to be tough for Yorgo. On the other hand, you know, maybe uh, Robert Jan is kind of stuck right now. Because look at that. He's just passing turn, not really doing anything. Yorgo taking four damage here from his own Ank of Mishras. He has one card in hand still. It looks like he's going to animate. Interesting. Does that mean that he has... There we see an animate. I'm expecting... Okay, we're going to see a side blast here, probably. Tapping three. Oh, a disenchant, of course. Even better for Yorgo here. And he's dealing two points of damage to Robert John. So he's going to drop to 14. And, you know, actually, it's not looking too bad here for Yorgo, considering, you know, the, the situation. And look at the amount of cards in hand by Robert John. I wonder what's in his hand there. Maybe he cannot find any lands. Remember, each land that he plays out is going to mean four damage because of the double Ank of Mishra on the board. And there we see Yorgo picking up a card, attacking for two here. So Robert John dropping to 12 and a pass. Man, this is exciting. I thought after that mind twist that uh, Yorgo was a goner. And there we see a second land. So he's going to drop to eight. A sinkhole on the Mishra's factory. Kind of stopped the bleeding here for Robert John, but he's on eight. I mean, if you're Yorgo, you're like, okay, I'm still in it. Remember, Robert John won the first game. So Yorgo needs to win this one to kind of get to a game number three. And I'm really hoping we're going to get to a game three because I just love watching these two decks going head to head. There we see another sinkhole, by the way, and just a pass turn from Yorgo. He's probably just waiting for his burn. And maybe Yorgo also just has answers. There we see a chain lightning and a city in a bottle. There we see a hypnotic specter. And I believe it's going to be met by that chain. Okay, there we see a vice. Oh, vice is actually pretty good because robert John has a lot of cards in hand. And now we're going to see that chain probably... Yes, the chain on the Hypnotic Spectre makes absolute sense. There's a pass turn. And we see damage here by Robert John. How much? Two damage, I believe. He's going to drop to six. And remember, double Ank on the board. I mean, it's looking really good for Yorgo. If Robert John gonna, if he's going to play out a land, he's going to take four points of damage. He's going to drop to two. And with that vice on the table, this is a serious problem. He needs Dark Rituals, actually, to play out something. I believe I've seen Underworld Dreams in his hand, but remember, he doesn't have three black to cast it. He's got to play out something, right? I mean, if he doesn't, he's just going to take damage from the vice. Okay, there we've seen Underworld, uh, Underground C, sorry. So he's going to go to two. He's going to play out another Hypnotic Spectre. Yorgo's going to untap here. Oh, really good Copper Tablet! Oh, man, and I believe there are five cards in hand for Robert Young. That means he's going to go to one because of the vice, and he's going to lose because of the copper tablet. There is a pass turn, and we see Yorko saying, hey, you take a damage from the tablet. Oh, he's got four in hand, it seems, not five. 
Yeah, no, he, oh, he, I, I believe he's got five in hand. Okay, he's going to play. Okay, what he does is he's going to stack the triggers so that he can play the Swords to Plowshare before he takes the damage from the Vice. So he can actually do that. So that means he's going to gain two life from the, going to go up to three, not going to take damage from the Vice because he's got four in hand and then draw a card. So he's still alive. He's still in it. For a moment there, Jorgo thought he already won the game. But I would be really, really surprised if Robotjan can still win this. And you, <laughs> you see, you're like, the, it's, these are the artifacts that are killing you. And he's tapping three again. Are we going to see another hippie? He's already played out two of those. Let's see what he can do. And he's just going to pass. 11 now for Jorgo. And he's going to take it. I'm just going to go to 10. Oh, time twister. Sweet. Oh, 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 that's so brutal. He also has a time twister showing time twister in his hand, but there's really nothing he can do here. So both players are going to shuffle up. And um, I guess that one hypnotic specter shouldn't be shuffled back in because it got uh, plowed upon. But it looks like both players are missing that. I don't think it's going to be very relevant, though. I mean, look at the life total here of Robert John. He's on three. I mean, what are his chances, really? I guess he's hoping for a disenchant so he can disenchant the vice. That's what he's hoping for. That can save him. He needs a disenchant here. Because then untap, upkeep, and again, he can stack it in a way that he can first play an instant so he doesn't take the damage. So, But this is going to be very, very difficult for him. But first, of course, Jorgo can decide. I didn't drop a land yet. Okay, there we see a Loa, so that means he's going to go to six, which is kind of risky. I was kind of expecting him maybe to drop a red source and play a bolt, and it will be end game already. Looks like he hasn't found a bolt, though. He's going to play another Vice and pass. So that makes it even more difficult. That's it. Yeah, that's it. I mean, Robert Jan knew when he was shuffling up after the Time Twister, I've got like a 0.1% chance. Um, you know, to kind of find something useful. I'm probably going to die. And that's exactly what happened. But I'm really happy because it means we've got a 1-1. One, one, and I'm so looking forward to this game number three. Game number three. Here we go. Robert Jan versus Jorgo. There is a Library of Alexandria. It looks like Jorgo isn't sure yet if he wants to keep the hand. Now he is. He's saying, okay, go. So this is a good start, although are we going to see... Yes, there it is, a Black Vice. Black Vice is such a good answer to Library of Alexandria. And now it's going to be inter interesting to see if Robert John is going to go for the extra card next turn. So first he's going to take the damage from the Vice, six in hand, going to go to 18, going to draw card number seven. Is he now going to use the Loa to draw card number eight? Obviously, it really depends what is in his hand. If, for example, he's got a Ritual or a Mox or a Lotus... He might be more inclined to draw that extra card. So he's going to draw card number eight. Look at that ritual into Hypnotic Spectre. Okay, that's that's really what you want to do when you're Robert John. So this is this is great. And at least the Loa has now replaced itself. I wonder if your Ho, you know, is going to bolt or chain that poor Hypnotic Spectre. Hypnotic Spectre hasn't had that big of an influence on the game. It's a very strong creature, but it's also very boltable. There we see Chain Lightning taking care of the Hippie. And a pass turn. So Robert John's going to draw. What can he do here? He's going to play an underground C. No, he's not. He's going to play a scrubland instead. I wonder what he's going to do with the three mana. Are we going to see another hippie? Going to go through his cards again. Looks like he's just passing turn there. Five in hand. That means one damage next turn. From the Black Vice. Tapping two. Okay, there's a Copper Tablet. Copper Tablet did some great work for Jorgo in game number two. And he's not playing out of land. Just passing turn. So damage from the Tablet. Damage from the Vice. That means Robert John's dropping to 16. There is a Juzum Jin. I just love the Juzum Jin. You know, it's for me, it's like... I love it when a player has this philosophy of I'm just going to drop a threat and you have to deal with it. And here we see Jorgo, by the way, looking for answers for that Jews and playing an Ancestral Recall. He's probably hoping for a city in a bottle. 
Hasn't played a land yet for turn, so in theory you could drop a land exactly and then play out a, uh, a city in a bottle, getting rid of the Loa and of the Juzam Jin. If you're Yorho, you really want to find an answer for that Juzam. Yorho being in the tank here, having a full grip of cards. And I guess the fact that he needs this long to think shows that he doesn't have a city in a bottle. If he had a city in a bottle, he would have just slammed it on the table straight away. Remember, he's playing two main. We haven't seen an ATOC yet, by the way, I'm thinking. That's really weird. Yorcha, where are your ATOCs, man? And it looks like the players are ordering a drink at the moment. It's quite interesting. He is playing with four Atox main. We haven't seen a single Atox so far in this matchup. And there we see robert John taking damage, of course, one from the tablet, one from the Juzam, and not taking any damage from the Vice because he had four in hand. Now he's got five in hand, and he's going to attack again. So Yorcha's going to drop to 14. There we see a basic swamp. It's going to tap three here. Underworld Dreams, okay, so that means some extra damage for Yorcha. And I always find Underworld Dreams and, uh, okay, there we see a Bolt. So Dorbachan going to drop to 11. What I wanted to say is that I always feel that Copper Tablet and uh, Underworld Dreams together are just brutal. It's such a big difference whether you take one damage return or two damage return. It's really a big difference. There we see a Loa by Yorcha. And again, you know, it's, it's funny how both players have their own weapons against Library of Alexandria, because because of that uh, Underworld Dreams, you know, every card that Yorho draws extra is going to hurt him. Is he now finally going to play out an Atok? Is it really going to happen? Or maybe not. And there he is playing a Chaos Orb. And a pass turn here from Yorcha. So that Chaos Orb is great, of course, because he can start using that. And Yorcha is taking a little risk here. He could have decided to just activate the Chaos Orb on the Juzum Jin, uh, but instead he's waiting. And why is it a risk? Because if Robert John now um, draws into a Disenchant, he can Disenchant the Chaos Orb in response to its activation. So there we see an attack. Now we're going to see the activation. Are we going to see a Disenchant by Robert John? It looks like there is no disenchant here. Both players having a little discussion, it seems. And when he activated, he doesn't have to um, say the target, but in this case, it's not really relevant, I think. And yeah, they're going to flip. Okay, this is a big one. Here we go. Yep, it's a hit. Yeah, both of these players know how to flip an orb. But I mean, there is tension on it. This is the last match in the Swiss round before we enter the top eight. There we see a sinkhole on, on the Tundra, okay. There we see a bolt. So he's going to drop to six. Two damage again for Yorho, going to 10. And it's unfortunate that we cannot see the amount of cards in hand by uh, Robert John. I believe he's got four in hand at the moment, perhaps three. Yorho in the tank. Are we finally going to see an ATOC? No, a city in a bottle. Oh, that is interesting. So now he's finding that city in a bottle. Actually, he's changing his mind, taking it back. And just passing turn here. So I guess Robert John still needs to take the damage from the copper tablet. Exactly. He's going to go to five. I mean, and when you're Yorcha, you're probably a little bit bummed that you, you know, you find that city in a bottle right after you flipped on the Juzam. But that's the way magic goes sometimes. Look at this. And now, of course, he knows that he's got the city in a bottle. This is an interesting play, though, because 
if you're Robert John, you could have waited and you could have said to uh, Yorgo, you know what, first just play out your city in a bottle. Now we see a side blast on Robert John's life total, and that's a big deal actually. So now he just gained some life, and now he's losing four life again. So he's on six now, it seems. Yorgo is going to drop to eight. Oh, also going to drop to six. Oh, of course, because now he's taking the damage from the Underworld Dreams and the Copper Tablet. So it was an eight, then he takes two damage, going to go to six. Wow, both players are on six here. Game number three. Oh, man. It's so much fun to see these decks against each other. It's just great. And is he now going to use his Library of Alexandria? No, he's going to play out an artifact. He's going to play out a Black Vice. Not very relevant. He really needs an Atok here. And you can now see that both players are taking longer and longer for the, their turns. And that makes sense, of course. Because they're so close to the finish line. Robert John now on five. Is he going to play out something? Maybe a sinkhole here. Demonic Tutor. Ooh. Is there something in his deck that can grant him the victory? Of course, it's going to be a draw seven. And there's the fist bump. Yeah, if he can just play out a time twister because he has the Underworld Dreams on the table. That is going to grant him the victory. Well done, Robert John. Your dead guy on Starry's deck has won this one. And if you enjoyed watching Yorgo's deck, the good news is both of these players made it into the top eight. So next week we'll have our first top eight match being played here, um, showing you the first top eight match being played at the Often Troll Cup. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, thank you very much for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And um, if you want to help the channel, there are a few things that you can do. They're completely free and they really help Timmy Talks move forward. And that is liking this video, hit that thumbs up, leaving a comment, tell me what you think about this exciting match. At least I thought it was really exciting. Um, and what you can also do is share it on your socials. And if you're new to the channel, welcome here at Timmy Talks. Please consider subscribing and ring that bell. Oh man. What a match, what a match. I have to say the whole tournament is just so much fun and we have more matches coming up. We're gonna start with the top eight semifinals and the finals, so three more episodes are upcoming. So keep an eye on the channel. Um, there's one last thing you can do, by the way, if you wanna support the channel, you can also become a patron of Timmy Talks and that already starts with $1 a month. And the cool thing is you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. The end scroll, yes, the end scroll. You'll find it at the end of every video, including this one. So let's go to the end scroll. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazee!